Um, okay, hi. Uh, thank you so much for having me here today. Uh, my name is Adriana Kochańska, and I'm a researcher at UIT, the Arctic. Sorry, my glasses are <laughs> the Arctic University of Norway. Um, as part of the Aquavita project, we're developing a massive open online course on sustainable aquaculture for low tropic species. Um, so, just a few words about Aquavita. Uh, we are a Horizon 2020 project. Um, and we are working on new species, processes, and products contributing to increased production and improved sustainability in low trophic aquaculture value chains in the Atlantic. Um, so who is this presentation for? Uh, educators, students, LTA experts, and enthusiasts. Um, however, if you don't find yourself in any of these groups, I hope you don't run out on me. <laughs> Okay, so I'll talk about the drivers behind the MOOC development, course overview, the pedagogical approach, uh, content of the course, the structure, and an alternate platform. So one of the main drivers uh, behind the MOOC development uh, are the sustainable development goals. Um, with the course material, we will be um, addressing nine out of the 17 development goals. And in particular, we will focus on goal 4.7, where we will help to provide the knowledge and skills needed to promote sustainable development. Um, one of the other drivers behind the online uh, course is the in increased interest in online education among adults. Uh, we have really seen that during the corona times and um, uh, OECD uh, has highlighted that online learning has the potential to address time scheduling and location barriers to adult learning. This means that people who previously didn't have the access to such resources are able to do that now. Um, yeah. um, one of the other big uh, drivers behind the MOOC development is the collective effort and the expert knowledge we have within the consortium. Um, so in the Aquavita project, we are 35 partners, um, 14 universities, 11 industry partners, 10 research institutions and one NGO. This means that um, the material within the course um, it comes from many different disciplines and it's a first-hand uh, expert knowledge. This means that the course is highly interdisciplinary, inter interdisciplinary and transdisciplinary. And just to highlight, we will be integrating many disciplines um, while also working with non-academic participants such as the industry. And this is all driven by a sound pedagogical approach. So the academic institutions, institutions such as UIT, we are providing training to our industry partners to make sure that the material found within the course is of good quality and good pedagogical quality. So just a few words about the course. Um, this will be a master level cor course. Um, it will be available on the open edX platform. So this is free of charge, open to absolutely anyone. Um, it's an X MOOC, which means that it is self-run and does not require a mentor or a moderator. Um, this has a bit of a disadvantage as we don't have the interaction between the teacher and the student. So what we are trying to do is to embed as much student communication activities into the course as possible. Um, it is a, uh, the course will have 10 interdisciplinary modules and the expected student, work, student workload is approximately 140 hours, which is equivalent to five ECT points. If the students choose to complete all of the 10 modules, they will receive the certificate. Um, if, if they don't need the certificate, they can just choose and pick the modules of interest. So since this is an open online course, uh, of course, anyone can participate in it, uh, but we do have some students and target audiences in mind. Um, so our expected student profile is uh, they have to be um, fluent in English and have some um, a bachelor degree in a relevant field. We'll also aim this course as at the teachers. So the material in the course uh, will be and the teachers can use the material in a flipped classroom format. Um, this means that uh, they can give the student access to the course and say, hey, um, 
go and read about this, uh, watch those videos and come back to the classroom and we can discuss it in a group setting um, as opposed to the traditional learning where the teacher gives out the knowledge and the students go home uh, to do their homework. Um, and finally, we also aim this course at some industry uh, participants. Um, as I said, they will be able to pick up a single module and just top up their knowledge in a field that perhaps they're currently working or something that is uh, very relevant. Um, so as I mentioned, we're following, um, uh, we're trying to make sure that the, the, the pedagogical approach uh, is there. So we're following a constructive alignment theory um, where we are, first of all, developing the learning outcomes. We are then making sure that uh, those learning outcomes meet the assessments and the teaching and learning methods that uh, we have within the course. Um, moreover, since this is an, uh, a master level course, we would like the students to gain skills that are at the higher level uh, of learning. So uh, through the different um, assessments, uh, we will guide the students on how to analyze and evaluate the different settings within low trophic uh, aquaculture um, disciplines. Um, so the course will provide insight on sustainable methods of food production for low trophic species, new or improved um, LTA product market potential and consumer perspectives, latest developments in production systems, existing policy and governance of LTA, and uh, economics and business models. So within the course, um, we have 10 different modules. So these are the initial five modules. And um, in, to, in the introduction, the students will learn about what is low trophic aquaculture, what is sustainability, and how those topics connect together. Um, we will then go into four different groups of species. And we have chosen these species um, because we're actually working with most of them within the Aquavita project. So the, the expert knowledge is readily available to us and we can um, uh, give that uh, to the students. Um, the following five modules are, will be building upon the first uh, modules and um, some of the species will be introduced and put together as an in integrated multi-trophic uh, aquaculture. We will then also teach the students about seafood sa safety, consumer perspectives um, and products, um, business economics, um, governance, and of course the future of low trophic aquaculture. Um, and here we will focus on the sustainability and um, how low trophic aquaculture can contribute to climate change adaptation. Um, so just exemplify how the course will be structured based on one on, of the modules. So these are the echinoderms. Uh, under the echinoderms, we have the sea urchin topic and the sea cucumber topic. Each of the modules will start with a short introductory video um, and an engagement activity for the students uh, where they can e either introduce themselves or perhaps uh, write uh, about what they already know about uh, the topic. And now I will um, describe the sea urchin uh, in a bit more details. So here are just two out of um, a few uh, learning outcomes. So the students will be able to describe the biology of the sea urchin with a focus on reproduction and the different stages of the reproductive cycle. They will be able to provide supporting arguments for sea urchin low enhancement from the environmental and economic perspe perspective and uh, outline the challenges it faces. Um, in the sea urchin topic, we'll have seven different subtopics. Um, and as here you can see the highlighted row enhancement, so um, everything is in a way related to, to the sea urchin row enhancement. Um, each of the topics will follow um, exactly the same structure, uh, just to make it easier for the students to follow the course. So we will start uh, with a short video uh, we will then have a very short quiz. Um, sometimes the quiz will um, appear um, in the middle of the video just to make sure that the students are paying attention, just like a very quick uh, knowledge deck. Uh, we'll then lead the students into the reading material. So this is the compulsory part of the reading material. 
Um, and then in the additional material section, we can guide the students to um, scientific articles, reports, websites, um, or even other courses that, uh, uh, that are relevant to, to low trophic aquaculture. Um, the students will then again have some sort of um, quiz, which will be a bit more, uh, a bit longer than the previous one. And then finally, they will uh, accomplish um, an advanced assessment, which is most likely to be peer reviewed. Uh, so apart from learning um, about the, uh, the, the seven different topics here, they will also gain uh, uh, transversal skills where they're able to evaluate other students um, in the course. So one of the um, platforms that we will be guiding the students to um, is the Altanet uh, platform. So this is the Atlantic Low Trophic Aquaculture Network. And this has been developed as part of the Aquavita project. And it's a hub for all the information related to low trophic aquaculture. So here the students will be able to uh, access the latest reports, publications, videos. And um, what's great about this website is that uh, it refreshes every single day. So we have a web crawler um, that searches the whole internet and anything related to low trophic aquaculture will appear on that website every 20, 24 hours. Um, yes, so I would like to end with this quote. Um, according to the best available scientific knowledge, by far the biggest potential for increasing seafood production in the foreseeable future is through the farming of marine species, especially those at lower levels in the ocean food system. So I strongly believe that with this course, we will be contributing to um, to this goal, uh, to making sure that low trophic aquaculture is, um, is, is known and is being developed. And um, to the best of my knowledge, there's currently limited online courses on low trophic aquaculture. So I also believe we're filling in a very important gap. And um, here is my uh, perhaps request to you. Um, as I mentioned, we will be leading the students to a lot of additional material. So if there is any work that you are doing yourself that you think uh, we could connect to this course, uh, we'll be more than happy to, to talk and, and collaborate. Uh, yes, thank you. Thank you. Do we have questions for Ariane? Yes. Yeah, thanks for the nice talk. That was really interesting. Thank you. And I guess you wrote some uh, smart sentences to the commission about what happens after the lifetime of the project because that's a massive amount of work you're putting in there. And how does that continue? Um, as far as I know, the commission is very excited <laughs> about the course. Um, so since this is a self-run course, uh, we will, of course, try to finish everything within the project time. Um, and then it will be running its own life uh, after the project. So, um, of course, we will try to perhaps update some of the material after the project ends. Uh, we have some, let's say, additional funding from other sources that we could, that enable us to, uh, to do that. Yeah. More questions, please? Yep. Yeah, first of all, this was amazing. It's a fantastic course, and just the setup there. I mean, I've reviewed for the commission too, and I understand why you got funded. This is a great idea, <laughs> and it's a really, really good way of disseminating information. Uh, what I'm mainly interested in, like in four years, you're basically setting up business plans for every low tropic species that we have to on. Is that realistic that you'll be doing that? Um. Uh, what do you mean by business plans for? Well, it sounds like you had every low tropical Yeah, so, um, okay, so we would, um, uh, we will not do it for every species. We would take case study basis, and then we would uh, give examples based on two or three of the different um, species. Um, yeah. More questions, please? 
because it's a little past seven minutes. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, as you know, I mean, there is a lot of, in, uh, of, of really incentives for low trophic species, but, but uh, I, I think a lot of them are not yet commercially uh, produced. I mean, there's a lot of, uh, yeah, of gaining of knowledge in you know, order and practical things and then economical as well. So uh, at what, should, what level would you think these courses are? Are they mainly like established uh, ways of producing them or are they mainly at, at an experimental level? Um. Uh, it's a mix of, uh, of things, so some of the species are of course more established than the others and in those we'll be able to provide uh, you know, the A to Z, how to do this um, step by step. Uh, in others we'll just exemplify the early stages of, of the development and uh, uh, for example the, the macroalgae, one of the topics is novel species, so we will not um, we will not take it to the market level, but we will talk about you know, how are novel species developed, what steps do people go through uh, to test the different species. Yeah. Okay. Any further questions? Yeah. It's more a comment because uh, as uh, Ariana has planned to make some of the assignments uh, more like kind of uh, go to your own region and see what you can develop. I think that that will also be a way to keep the, the course kind of alive, alive and also include new knowledge on the way. So if we get it done. Yeah. So. <laughs> okay. More questions? <laughs> Great. Thanks okay. a lot for okay. Thank you. <laughs>